the quality will be a bit worse because I put it on the wide angle lens, but you should be able to see everything, which I guess is more important. So this is the stand model first. I used to have the, what is it? The one without the stand because I wanted it. Honestly, I was more worried that Asus would discontinue this monitor before I could even get one. Because who's gonna pay? This was $599. And then if you wanted the, what's it called? The three year accidental warranty from Square Trade or Allstate, whatever they change it to on Amazon. I did email and I did get confirmation from Square Trade that this monitor is covered under the specific warranty that I purchased which is a three-year accidental for this specific monitor. So that's good. Um, I, unfortunately, nobody's really going around anywhere right now because of a uh, you know, pandemic. But if things were normal, like this is what I wanted to like bring to, just bring around with me and stuff. So the box for the one with the stand is much bigger than the other one. Honestly, they feel about the same. They just kind of shove like a laptop bag in there. This really isn't going to protect your monitor. So, let's, let's grab this. This is the laptop bag, or monitor bag. Alright, I just had to go check on the puppy. Uh, I apologize if it's uh, loud, the barking. Uh, we, we have to take him to the vet, so that's why he's uh, making a lot of noise. Uh, you know, vaccinations and all that. But, uh, yeah, so this is the inside of the little laptop bag. I guess if I had, like, an S4 Mini or something, you could just slide it in one of these. But, I mean, it's a cool bag, you know. Carrier with the stand and everything like this. Uh, on the other one, I didn't have anything. I'm, I'm not gonna act like this is like super protective, you know, if you stow through a T1 on top of this or your actual PC case. I see, mm, I don't know. I was gonna say if I drop my 3090 from here to here, would it crack? Probably not, but like, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna try that. All right, uh, so in the box on the left side, this should be the power adapter. I do recognize it. Yeah, it's, it's literally just, a US wall outlets, nothing special. I'm probably never even gonna use this. So that's why I usually just leave it in the box. So if I sell it, I remember where it was because trying to find this again is, like I don't need another wall outlet, you know? Honestly, uh, I'm probably just gonna leave it in the box, it's useless. Like this, right? I already explained why it's useless. I use that one cable, the Hawaii cable I showed you, the cable that is needed for the XG17 to work on, you know, GPUs that aren't basically an RTX 20 series. I believe that cable should work fine on the, uh, what is those cards? The big Navi cards. Um, like I said, uh, I don't know when this will be up, but, you know, if this is up, you know, after the release, like October 28th, that's why I started putting dates in the videos. So nobody says, oh dude, you're an idiot, bro. That prediction is wrong. Like what you said is wrong. There's, it's already confirmed that those do whatever. So it's like, I, I didn't know at that time. So. Come on. That one in there. And just the monitor has to come out now. And of course it's got you know, it's a little protection on each side. And this is the actual monitor box. And I'll keep this. The rest of this goes in the basement. I don't need all this. This 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 is important. This is heavy. This this is literally the only thing everybody wants. Oh man, this this camera's garbage. 
The wide angle is literally garbage. Let me, let me turn on some lights. Is that better? Or is it still, did it make any difference? Wow. Wow, it made like no difference. Well, I apologize, the wide, lang wide angle lens is so bad. The white wipe is meant to clean the dust off the, uh, the mouse pad, but you can sort of see it. And if Asus would just sell this stand, it's then you wouldn't have to. Some some people in some countries told me you can't even get this stand. Um, uh, what's it called? Like, well, I meant that's not what I meant. I mean, like some people in their countries aren't even offered an option of the monitor with the stand. Um, so yeah, so it's upside down. You open it up real quick. This feels like really premium, like compared to the like janky thing I was recommending before. Like this is like the main reason why I wanted this full bundle is because I saw one review or not a review, I saw one video by Zelda, and he set up his Ghost S1 like so fast with this arm, this stand, and I just, like for a portable build, right? I thought it was so cool. This stand is really premium. Like this, this is way more premium than what I had before. Would I say it's $100? No, but it's like, it's, it's, it's definitely better than the $50 things I was recommending or looking at. It's got locks everywhere clicks into place it feels very like good quality too like it actually feels really good quality I, I want it because it had a quick disconnect you can see that right yeah so i'll take some of this stuff off the desk uh, i guess this carrying case helps i won't need this um it has a little tool to i guess adjust or crank stuff i have no idea so this can go back into here and this can go on the floor. Okay, so now the actual monitor. And here's the best part about IPS panels. You get to pay IPS lottery every time you get one. So if you sell your old panel to get a new one, and this one has issues, because a lot of people said they, they got bad panels. Look, I got, this is gonna be like my fourth panel. Well, this is the third panel. The, the one that I'll open up, the other one, the one without the stand will be my fourth panel. So, you know, I'm doing a pretty good lottery ratio test here for the guys who don't have it or scared they got one, whatever you're, whatever it is. We're getting like, you know, good yields. So this, this is the same thing as before. It's, it's new, you know. Um, hmm. Maybe I should zoom in. Yeah, th this one's a little bit better. So, we'll take this out. Same thing, it has a little iPad Pro whatever cover. Um, the calibration report. Um, okay, right off the bat, I'm a bit disappointed with this one. Uh, this, this one's supposed to be like mine, like the one I keep, uh, the end all be all. This is the one that has the warranty. The color accuracy here, I'll just show it. The color accuracy is about 1.24 off. Uh, sRGB is 96.8. Gamma is 2.18. I mean, the curve looks good and uh, this part looks good. Um, I could probably calibrate it better. So, uh, <laughs> I just want it perfect. Um, any person who actually calibrates their panels would just be like, well, hey man, um, the human eye can't, you know, see that difference anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're not wrong, you're not wrong, but I have a calibrator, so I'll calibrate it. I know how to calibrate IPS panels. And then this is the HDMI, mini HDMI, HDMI, this is that USB-C, USB-C. So this cable, if you have an RTX, 20 series GPU like I used to have or if you have a AMD um, 
Thunder's Edition Navi. I don't know if it's going to be on all of them. Uh, it has a USB-C virtual link cable. Um, and then this is that USB to USB-C uh, cable, so you can attach it to the charger to charge it. I'm not going to use this. I don't need this. So this can go back in here, and then the box has literally nothing else in it. So we'll close this up, and then let's take this apart. I don't think it had instructions on how to use the stand. So, otherwise, it's it's basically the same thing as the other one. Oh. Oh. Am I gonna use the stand? Fold it and then clip on the back. Yeah, I am gonna use the stand. Okay. Yeah. So this is obviously new. The leather one you remember from last time. After I'm done taking this off, that is visible, right? Is this in frame? The, okay, so the over here is in frame. Okay, move over once again. All right, actually, we'll just put this on top of the bag, it's fine. And take this off. Hmm, that's tricky. The sides come off first. Okay, that one comes off. Okay, this one comes off. And then top where it comes off. And now we're finally at the panel. And one second. Yep, the serial numbers match. Alright, so we're good. Now let's take this out. And um, right off the bat, you know, it's a new panel, but can we can we see it? No, I, I was trying to show there was dust on it. <laughs> Literally just got it. But let's take this off. We don't need this advertising sticker. I know what it is. I'm always worried about these things that it leaves like a little bit of adhesive on it, and then I have to. I mean, I don't have to use Goo Gone, but it's just, you know, you obviously don't want, like, a little bit of adhesive on the side of your monitor. It's annoying. Well, it's not annoying. It's disgusting, actually. So, let's fold this up. Let's fold this up. And I want to put everything back into the box. Alright, this monitor... Clip on. My clip on. So it goes like that. At least I thought it did. Okay. Yep, it goes like that. Alright, so that one's good. Now this comes on top of that. And this can go below that. And now back in the box. I'll put the calibration report on top of it, so if I ever need to see it, um, I, don't, I don't need to see it. But for those of you guys that are never going to calibrate your panels, I mean, that's, I have no idea what Best Buy charges, but the calibrator is about like a hundred something dollars, so you, you do save that money, but it's like, is this really your main monitor? I have no idea. So this is a little baggy. You can put this stand in. Um, it's, it's, it's nice, it's nice. I still have no idea how to put my monitor arm. Oh, what? Oh, okay, I, I don't know, is that visible? No. Okay, so I'm gonna put it onto the stand, so I'll show what I did. I'll switch to I just move it closer, it's fine. 
So basically, this is a quick disconnect, and I wanted a good quick. Uh, oh my god, I wanted a good quick disconnect, but um, unfortunately, all of them were like. It just wasn't perfect. So basically this, just, you put it on, slides, and then these two clips, slides right off. It's it's really nice. So let's rotate this so you can see it. Okay. So this is how your monitor, like I screw this into my monitor and I use a screwdriver, but um, watch again. You literally just slide it. Okay, I must be getting the angle off. Okay, so they're right there. And then it just slides. Clips in the place. So, basically, if you want to use it with the stand, you can. And if you want to use it without the stand, you can very quickly and easily choose. So that's that's what I wanted. Um, if you want to... Okay, but well, right now I'm not using that ultra-wide monitor, so you saw what it looked like before. Like... Uh, if you go back to the setup video of what my setup used to look like um, September 27th, I used to have an ultra wide panel and then I had this um, like this with the stand right below it. And then the pressure of this monitor was resting on the ultra wide, but I'm not using that setup anymore. And basically I switched to an OLED and um, a 90 FE and uh Look, honest to God, if you have the money, don't don't look back. There, there's nothing better. Uh, yeah, that's that's really it. Um, and and for this, this this is really the best portable monitor you're gonna get. Like that, that's really it. Um, MSI said they'd have one. MSI doesn't have one, and I still have no idea why they were given the award at CES because it, it's a joke. It's it's not a real product. It's vaporware. This is a real product that works and it's fantastic. So, only con is if you have an NVIDIA card. Uh, NVIDIA doesn't allow G-Sync over HDMI with this because it's HDMI 2.0B. Um, HDMI over, uh, my bad, G-Sync over HDMI works for the LG OLED. And I did have to do a firmware update and um, I did that before this, but if hopefully if I have a video I can put that up and show you but that basically I had to go download the Korean firmware update to fix it so I didn't have any g-sync flickering so yeah but anyway this one doesn't have any g-sync flickering and if you get that cable that I said um, you won't have any issues like you'll have full g-sync compatibility on a Strix XG17 and it just works like it's great uh, it just feels smoother, like really, like when you're moving or you play FPS games. Um, if if this was cheaper, I I wish everybody with an ITX build could have this because this is this is honestly the monitor. Like this is it. I wish it was half the price because my cousin, like everybody, could have one of these. And if you have like an ITX build that you know is better than a laptop, which is pretty much everybody, um, those laptops are like three grand. They're they're super expensive. They lose half their value in like you know like a year and then after that like nobody wants to buy one why why would i want to buy a three thousand dollar zen big duo with an oled screen and then a 2060 max q and it's like that's great like a 2060 max q is basically equivalent to a gtx 10 1160 ti like a desktop variant i don't want to call it trash but i mean you, you understand it's trash for the amount of money you're paying if you really like need to be portable and if your business or your your a job or whoever you have somebody else paying for them and then they're like i don't know like then it's fine you know if, if you're going on business trips all the time like yeah you can't beat that the whole monitor i mean the whole laptop is basically this big but if if like if you really need that extra headroom and you want to be able to move it around to like a friend's house or a LAN or anything I, I just find it hard to believe like you need anything bigger and then the only thing that would match or pair up um, fantastic you know or be optimal would be this so anyway I'll, I'll go back to setting this up so I'm taking this off uh, take off this sticker for the Strix logo throw it back in the box 
Obviously, you don't need that. Close that box up. I'm going to leave this because why not? So, like this, like this. Then you fold this part. Hopefully, this is in frame. And then you rest it like this. So now, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. So, for the quick disconnect, we're going to take this and we have to screw this in. So I have to get my screwdriver, which I have no idea where it is. Hmm. It's weird because it was like right here. And now it's, you know, like not right here. All right, one sec, be right back. So I found a screwdriver, um, it's next to my computer, so, so yeah, you basically just take this, the quick disconnect, obviously, you have to put this down, and I think the best way probably be to do it like this, so, this uh, specific model was manufactured August 2020. I got it, what month is this? October, so I got this a few weeks ago. So it takes like, as soon as they manufacture it, they're shipping them out. Yeah, it keeps selling out. So I my fear of, you know, this not being, you know, supported, turns out it's pretty popular. I have no idea how, I guess SFF is becoming popular which is pretty cool actually, to be honest with you. I mean, they killed SLI, you know? Nvidia said that SLI's, SLI support is up to the developers and there's only SLI on an RTX 3090. So how many people do you even know is gonna buy an RTX 3090? Nobody. So. Yeah, SLI is dead. It's funny because as soon as DirectX 12 is basically mandatory in most games, like Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare, like Warzone, everything, DirectX 12. Cyberpunk 2077, DirectX 12. And it's like, oh, now we finally got, you know, DirectX 12, all games, uh, multi-GPU works. Like, it's finally here. Oh, did we mention we just killed it? <laughs> so, yeah. It's funny, if they didn't kill it, an RTX 3080, um, two of them for $699 plus $699 is 13, it's around $1398. So it's like, you're spending $1398 and that would have more performance than a 3090. Like, obviously still, you know, it's not like you can double up the VRAM, but for most applications, um, if it ever got support, yeah, it'd be better. I'm hoping that the some somehow some way the they can optimize the 90 and then there will be a better bigger gap over the 80. But like in VR, Open VR, um, you can see like a 22% gap um, in the Open VR benchmark. I mean, Blender, you know, in the Resolve Studio, DaVinci Resolve Studio, it's it's basically nil. So maybe if they can optimize the because the CUDA cores operate differently from Turing to Ampere. And then maybe more tensor core optimization. I have, I have no clue. I hope it scales better. Besides, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is like probably the worst benchmarks to look at. You're just like, oh, that looks like the difference between uh, a 3080 and an overclocked 3080. Like, it's so bad. Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at least there's some gap. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically it. So we'll go back to this. So you uh, basically screw that on, and now I'm gonna slide this onto this. So we should slide on like, so this is coming off, so I'll lock that. Okay, that's locked. And actually, let's, let's not do it in the stupid way. I'll actually show you how it's supposed to go on like in the video. So it's supposed to slide on this way. So that's not facing me. So if it slides on this way, now it's facing me. 
I'll slide this on. Let's see if I can get this. Can you see this? No, there's probably no way I can get this to work. Maybe I can. Maybe I can do it from your position. So basically, you know what? I, I don't even care. Look, you take this, you take this, and you slide this onto this. So it's not that difficult. See? Look at it. It clips on very quickly and easily. Um, the VESA quarter thread mount, like when I tried to do it like this, um, who was it made by? Vivo? That thing was so jank. I felt like I was going to mess up the threading. So the guy who said it's a plastic threading, yeah, bro. Like, that's the reason why I wanted this. Because now this is screwed in pretty tight. I'm never doing this again. Like, so if I need to clip it off, like, I, I clip it off. So now it's like a real monitor. And then let's drop this little iPad diaper cover off. Off. So that that's it, that's it. And then now... The stand is like very robust. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's got weight to it. Like I can promise you, like there is weight to it. Is this is this better? Am I I am using the wide angle lens and it's still doing this. Hmm. But yeah, you can tilt it up. Come on, there's gotta be a better way. It, maybe I have to raise it up. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think this is probably, this is the way. Okay. So this stand, it has locks in place. Everything has locks in place. And I'm pretty sure I have it so I can't raise it up and down. So I can raise it up. So it's up. This is the max height. It is lower than the original stand that I showed in the video, uh, the first one. Man, this is, this is. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna rotate. All right, so it's still on the wide lens, but I just moved the camera over and I put it onto a box. So there's additional height. Everything should be in frame now. So this is what it looks like at max height. Oh shit. Okay, okay, Um, I didn't lock it. All right, so basically this is what it looks like at max height. So you have to lock it when you're moving it. Okay, that, that was, that, there's, don't worry, there's no damage. Just, just never do that. So um, uh, basically this is it at max height. This is the stand. There is no branding. There is branding obviously in the front. This is Republic of Gamers. This is that lock that I was talking about. Um, let's move it to the, rotate it. This is what it looks like from the side. And let's look at it from this angle. And all right, so now I'm gonna go up close and show you how to disconnect this. All right, so you see this, right? See this, uh, there's like these two little clip things. So see that one on that side And one on that side, see that? So basically what you do is you just hold the panel, squeeze, slide up. That's that's the reason why I wanted this stand. So if you want to use it with the little cover, like this, like I was talking about, hopefully this is in frame. You know, you just like want to use it like a little tablet thing, you can. And then if you want to use the actual stand, like you want to take it out, you literally just Take it out and then, actually, hold on. We'll, we'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. The, like this, this is this is huge. The heck is something down there? Oh yeah, I forgot. The quick disconnect. That's why. All right. So we'll fold this up. So this is how the old kit would be. You know, it'll be like this. And uh, let's fold this up, lock that in place, and then. On here as well, there is a, a lock. So these will not fold. You need to push this. And now, see that? Now you can fold them all up. This um, this stand is hefty. Like it's like it's good quality. Like it, it's like compared to the other one that I linked before, 
this thing weighs like four times that, like for sure, like maybe five times. So, I don't want to damage the mechanism, but I don't know if it moves without me um, having a monitor on it. Okay, so it's just very hard, but it does move. I was scared, I didn't want to break it. And then you just put it, oh. <laughs> so I just pushed this up forward, and then now you can put it into the little baggie that is like this, and then you just tuck it away. Just like that. It's not in frame. Now it's in frame. So, and then you basically carry in this. So, I'll probably get a specific bag in my case, but it's got a little shoulder strap. I wouldn't use that. I would probably just pack the monitor with this bag in that bag, or if it's really like a good bag, then I don't even need this. So, if you were using this, it doesn't really say instructions on how to fold it. I guess this is probably like a laptop bag because you'd have it as a side monitor. Laptop here, some accessories, and then you know you'd put it in here. And then you'd put the stand in one of these uh, pouches. Is there a thing in the front? No. It looks like there's a zipper in the front over here, but there's not. Um, nothing on the back, but otherwise, you know, you just carry it like that. Anyway, so this is a little little test. So, so we got it. We took up the monitor. It's, it's in the bag, right? And that's it. So, so you'll carry the monitor like this. And uh, you want to whoop it out. You pull it out like this. Now, if you want to use it with the little iPad cover, you can. This, you can leave screwed in, like forever. Uh, I tied it, I tightened it you know, decently tight. So, okay, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm never going to undo it, so I'd rather have it tight. Um, anyway, take it out. You can use it with the little iPad cover if you want, because it's quick and it's easy. So you just use it like that. Mm-hmm. Yep, just like that. And now if you do want to use the stand, you reach into the bag, you pull out the stand, and watch how this unfolds. It's very nice. One, two, three. And you hear that click because it's locked. And now take this. I'm probably going to put it away in my bag without doing this up-down thing every time. I just did it right now to show it. So, take this little flap off. Now, slide this on, same thing. Now I'm eyeing this, I, I can't see it. Yeah, I really can't see it like this. So, we're just going to take this, take this. It clips on like really easy. And then now you same thing, rotate it down. And it's like a real monitor arm, man. Like it like goes left and right. Hold on, let me just take this off because it's messing it up. The only thing that's weird is they give you this little Allen key and I have no idea what it's for because there's no instructions it doesn't say. So. You can swivel this. See that? Swivel is just like a real monitor arm. And then for height adjustment, I have to take it off the lock. And now it goes up. And same thing. Now I'm pretty sure the height adjustment, that's what the lock is for. You can still swivel. Um, hmm. I did see somebody rotate it, but 
I'm not going to... Uh, rotation should work, but... Mm, not sure. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's like it's a legit monitor. Um, and then proof, I will connect it to my computer uh, right now. With that one cable, it's the Belkin VR charge and sync cable. You can see, it says Belkin. And you connect just this one. With the HDMI, I'm pretty sure you have to power it on. But like this one, it should just turn on by itself. That's what it usually does. So, let's see. Do I actually have to hit power? Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. It didn't say that before. They might have updated the firmware on these. You saw that? It says FreeSync Premium at the bottom right. It didn't say that before on the one I have. I'm pretty sure it didn't say that. Input device, PC. Charge, yes. The buttons feel better on this one than the old one I used to have. Battery's at 50%, automatically at 240 hertz. Volume, yeah, we can set the volume to 90. I usually set it to 90 on these monitors, or all my monitors, to be honest. Just so when I raise it to 100% Windows or whatever application, um, I'm not ever worried about it blowing the speaker. So, no, 90, back, eco mode, off, I don't care, power indicator, sure, whatever, key lock, information, 240 hertz, um, back, input pop-up, yes, input device, PC, hold up, go back, FreeSync Premium, I'm Pretty sure it didn't say FreeSync Premium before, it said FreeSync. Uh, now, how much of a difference does it make? I, I have no idea. Probably the same. sRGB mode, it's probably the calibration mode that they include with the calibration. Mm. Overdrive is set to 3. Uh, I mean, it's 240 hertz, so I, I would set it to 5. I'll have to go back and check the hardware unboxed video and see what the overdrive is set it to again. Mm, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think my PC is sending a signal, so I can load up the G-Sync Pendulum test on this as well. Alright, so if you remember from last time, I had this set up with the USB-C cable, and I'm glad I recorded it, but maybe with the new firmware or something that they changed, or I have a 3090 now. Um, it does not let me select any other color besides 8-bit. So it's the same thing, USB-C, that one cable I showed you. And look, 244, uh, yeah, 240 hertz, 144, 75, same options. And it won't let me do the 10-bit color option. Um, no idea why, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's the GPU. Overclock, temps, all that, uh, clock rate. I now will load up the G Sync Pendulum demo. G Sync, G, speak English. G, oh my god. G Sync Pendulum demo configuration 1080p full screen. Is there music to this? Oh. oh. That's why it keeps getting the gray. I have HDR on on the other monitor, so it might trick this one into running HDR. That's why the grays look so bad. All right, FPS slider. Let's make this go up to 240 and go down to 30. Let's see if we see any dips or whatever. G-Sync. Oh, look at that. It won't let me turn G-Sync on. Okay, that's... It's weird. 
video control panel, G-Sync, settings compatible for this monitor, windows in full screen, apply. Display settings. All right, let me just disconnect the television. It's not even connected, wow. That is super weird. Hmm. I probably have to restart my computer and that'll probably fix it. I'm really not sure. This should be the only panel connected. The TV is off. G-Sync is on, let's, let's turn it off. Okay. G-Sync is off, right? Okay, G-Sync is off. And now this can do V-Sync. Super sample scene. Show test pattern. V-Sync is on. No V-Sync, G-Sync. I can't turn G-Sync on. So now we go to the video control panel. What are you doing? Go to the NVIDIA control panel, turn G-Sync on, windowed in full screen, and enable settings with this selected display. It's not letting me select G-Sync. V-Sync will work, but G-Sync won't work. Look at that. Whoa. I don't know what they did with this firmware update, but if you have the old XG17, G-Sync works. They added FreeSync Premium and now it doesn't work. Or it's my 3090. Or I just need to reboot the computer. All right, I'll reboot it. I'm just gonna throw this in there, but with the HDMI, it would not auto turn on the monitor and load the BIOS. So USB-C on this, absolutely fantastic. I gotta log into Windows now. All right, so rebooted Windows. I'm back here, G-Sync compatible. Everything set, uh, super weird. 240 Hertz. You know what I probably messed up and I'm probably wasting time. I didn't set the vertical sync on for everything. So my bad. It's just really annoying because right now I'm just trying to see um, what I can hit like with uh, my GPU overclocking. So 3D Mark, Time Spy, all that requires you have G-Sync off and V-Sync off. And I have the frame limiter, you know, of three below your monitor's max refresh rate. Somebody's calling. And basically, since you have to set that option, it interferes with your benchmarks so you could, might get a lower score than you're supposed to obviously in port royale i'm not hitting 500 fps because it's so difficult to run maybe in three more gpu generations not 500 but you know like maybe i think we can do you know around 200 fps or 240 in port royale you know with uh what are they what are they on 30 90 40, 50, three generations of what, 60? Yeah, so it's what, 60, 90, yeah. You could probably hit that. Anyway, so it should work now. That was, that was my bad, but this was not wrong. 10-bit is still not an option. And I did add that clarification last time that did show that 8-bit was an option only with HDMI. And with 10-bit, with USB, with C, with the same cable, on a 20 series card, remember DisplayPort, I don't have a five meter USB-C to USB-C cable, that, that's super expensive. Uh, that's like an optical Thunderbolt cable, which is a lot of money. So anyway, full color, all that. Um, yeah, so we'll load up G-Sync, Pendulum Demo, 1080p full screen. And it should work this time, look. No sync. V-Sync, G-Sync, yep, G-Sync. I don't know if I have the G-Sync indicator on. 
to show when G-Sync is enabled. Can I add it later, even though I just did it? What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing, kid? Display G-Sync identifier. Okay, it's on. I, I don't know if it'll show up immediately. No. I might have to close the app. Ugh. One sec. Okay. Alt F4. Wow, G-Sync Pendulum demo is powerful. Can you Alt F4 it? G-Sync Pendulum demo. Same thing. Launch it again. And you can see G-Sync on. And we'll leave the camera speed go a little bit faster and we'll go to show test pattern looking smooth fps lighter set this to 240 and we'll set this minimum fps i don't know what the lowest it can handle is because it's a free sync premium it's not g sync i think it's like 48 hertz i think the red is when it like messes up Oh, it just does the right every time I click. My bad. All right, so we'll, we'll do the same thing. 30. Actually, I want to see what happens if I drop this down to 15. 15 FPS. Does it break G-Sync? If this is nausea inducing, I'll, I'll, I'll take it off. This is 40 to 60. Honestly, 40 to 60 is nausea inducing. Let's go to 240 and just 120 because I haven't used this monitor in so long since I got my OLED and honestly, 1080p at 17 inches and 240 hertz versus 120, it's like, it's ridiculous. Like this feels like, feels so good. It excels in what the OLED does not excel at. The only way I could get these gains is if LG makes a 48 inch OLED and it's 8K. So the 88 inch panel that they showed off in the review, um, I, that panel actually cost $30,000. Um, if we could get that down to a 48 inch, which should be possible in, what year is this, 2020? So, is it gonna be affordable? No. Is it gonna be possible? Yeah, I mean, they could do it. They could probably have that out by, honestly, the next two years if they want it. So, but with OLED, the reason why they only usually give software updates for like a year and then they have to incentivize you to buy it again next year is because they can only really make that money back um, by mass producing a lot of them. So they need to sell a lot. They need a. They need to move a lot. Otherwise, yeah. Also, the forty-eight inches come cut from the same mother glass as the seventy-seven. So, you know, I mean, if it, if we're actually taking the eight K panel from the eighty-eight inch, then. I don't know the exact math off the top of my head of what size panel that would be, but maybe around a 40, I don't know, maybe a 32, 32 to 40, I think. But yeah, this this panel is gonna be on the side of my OLED because I use it as a main. And then if I wanted to play FPS, I could play on this or use it on the side as a Discord monitor or whatever. But it, I wanted the stand and I wanted the easy access to USB-C cable. That's why I said I wasn't gonna like do any like hardcore wiring for it. Maybe just drag it on the ground behind the standing desk onto the left side. And then if I ever wanna pack up the monitor, it's really easy because of the stand and then I could bring it with me with my little PC case, friend's house or whatever. But I mean, it's pretty cool. We live in the future. I can even do that. And then, you know, wireless keyboard mouse. Uh, I don't have a good pair of wireless headphones because I, I wasn't really satisfied with the mic on the Logitech G Pro X wireless or whatever. The mic is kind of garbage. I have a mod mic wireless I could attach to it, but um, I'm still thinking. I'm looking at options, so we'll see. We'll see what I do.
But for now, everything else is pretty good. Um, I think I've probably covered literally everything. I did say I was going to compare this to the other one without the stand, but I mean, I mean, it's, it's basically the same thing. Uh, I can open up that one too and show a comparison, but it's, it's literally the same thing. But hey, I said I'd do it. So one sec. Okay, here we go. So this one over here, XG17 with just a stand, as you know. So when you carry it, you know, I already showed, it's just like this, you're, you're stuck at this angle. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. And it's okay, but like, you're not like getting the full experience. It's fine. You can use that DSLR camera stand that I sent oh, posted before, but I haven't found a good quarter thread one, and it just pissed me off that I had to spend like fifty bucks on a quarter thread, quick disconnect, quick like, and it just it wasn't perfect like the official one. So then, with the official one, uh, one sec, let's move this over. This is the official one. You can see that, right? It's in frame. It's just, um, let me just take it off the safety feature. Slide it down. You know, you could twist it, you know, um, twist like that. If you wanna pull it up, just pull it up. And it holds in place when you lock it. Same thing. Twist it again. It, it's great, dude. It's great. I don't know what to say. It's honestly way better than the other one. It quickly folds away. It looks much nicer. If you can sell the old one and get the one without... Oh, you can't see the other one. Okay, so let's put this one... Is, is there any way I can do this? I don't have enough space. I don't have enough space and my lens isn't wide enough. All right, so I'll put this one here where it takes up like the whole view. And then this one, can you see it now? Dude, you cannot. Okay, okay. All right. If I put this like this, if I put this like, oh, okay, okay, I got this, I got this. Big brain. Still not perfect. Okay. Big brain. All right. So when you're using that, let's see if we. All right. So I'll move the white wipes out of the way. So basically, when you use the one with the iPad cover, it's fine. It's just it's just not perfect. I I really wish that everybody could buy this stand because this stand makes it like like a complete package. It's perfect, but for some reason they won't sell this stand. Maybe if somebody makes a change.org petition or something, then we'll get you know the ability for the people who can't get this uh, model in their country and they can get that one and then they can buy the stand because I've looked and the only way I could I'm I'm using that stand that I told you guys to buy before for my phone now that's how I record all these things and it's it's cool you know like it has another use but it it's I I just there's there's just nothing. There really isn't. Maybe somebody can find something else that's like, there was this $150 one I was looking at, but then I just, I said, screw it. So this is the one and then see if you can sell the old one and then just see if you can get this one. Because right now it does look like they are 100% committed as in they, Asus is committed to selling these. I was just really scared that they wouldn't make them anymore. And I got it with the warranty. I honestly love the monitor. I told you nothing else like it exists. There's, you have no other options. If you want an OLED, only person who's going to sell it to you is LG. You know, W OLED. I don't like the sub-pixel structure of a W OLED. Great, bro. Uh, they don't make AMOLED that big. You have no other person you can go to. Well, I don't like HDMI 2.1 because I like DisplayPort. Great, bro. Then take your DSC. Take your take your compression crap, and you know until DisplayPort 2.0. Like, I mean, this is this is what we have to work with. 
I don't like NVIDIA's RTX 3090, but it's the only thing that gives you the frames at 4K if you don't want to dip below and feel a stutter or a judder or whatever. I mean, it's the same thing as last generation. Hopefully, this is my prediction, hopefully there is a 3090 competitor from AMD. You know, they didn't show off their biggest Navi, and it costs $999, you know, something that's reasonable. Um, if that doesn't happen you really only have one option. So, otherwise, wait two years and get actual price to performance for value. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, if, in terms of price to performance for people that actually care, um, a 2080 Ti is garbage right now. Um, if they showed not their biggest Navi, and let's just say AMD is because they beat Intel, so they, they have the right to charge the same price for the CPUs now. Um, people are upset about that, but no, they, they have the right. <laughs> um, in terms of GPUs, they, they haven't beaten NVIDIA. So even if you beat them in power efficiency, nobody really cares. Maybe SSF people care because it doesn't fit in their case anymore, but nobody cares. Uh, I have like five friends that literally bought new power supplies. Like, they don't care. So, when it comes to drivers, uh, hopefully there are no hardware level bugs regarding that, and they improve that. And then regarding the performance, if it's around the 3080, like which was shown in the 4K reveal, um, yeah, the little teaser, right? Then I'm expecting it to be around 16 gigs VRAM, around 599, 649, and it's actually in stock then if somebody is scalping for 1500 nobody's going to buy 30, 80, 10 gigs VRAM for $1,500, $1,200 if you can get something that's 5% less or 10% less in performance and it's actually available for $100 less. Um, if they do charge $599, then their little version, the two-slot version, not the two-and-a-half slot, that's what I'm talking about, the two-slot model would be, I'm assuming, around a 2080 Ti, and probably 399 with 12 gigs VRAM. That's stupid value. Uh, yeah, that's totally worth it. Um, for anybody that just wants to narrowly get by and they want the best ray tracing for Cyberpunk, which is why I stuck with NVIDIA even if it's just for this quarter, um, I, I don't think that AMD can beat NVIDIA at ray tracing. So if you want, you know, the whole experience, I mean, they've been optimizing ray tracing with DLSS for, what, like two years now? I mean, Watch Dogs is free right now, but that promo ends around the end of the month of October. So even if AMD is super competitive, I still feel like a bunch of people would still buy NVIDIA if they're like, oh, yeah, you get Cyberpunk for free bundled with your RTX card and works better with NVIDIA or ray tracing and DLSS. So, yeah. But it's good to have competition and it's good value. As you saw, this one had FreeSync Premium. That's an older model from June. That one has the regular old boot logo, whatever. But yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think I showed that the other one has it, so I'll just show it really quick. But otherwise, I'm done. That one's got to go. This one's going to stay. I love this. And it's going to be a side monitor. And if I ever leave with my PC, I just bring this. I come back home, I set it up easy, you know, PC closet, this side of the desk next to mine, OLED, <laughs> one second, now keep watching, I'm going to plug it in, remember with the USB-C cable, it turns on automatically, which drove me insane with the HDMI, with the HDMI, I had to reach over, click the power button, the power button, by the way, the buttons on that one feel firm, like it feels good, I have not done a, what's it called? Dead pixel tests, other stuff, but G-Sync works on it. I'll check. I didn't see any dead pixels, but I will check later on. Not in this video. I'll probably just update. So let's turn this on and watch. Watch it boot. Come on. What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is this? 
This monitor is dead? Technical difficulties. All right. We're, we're going to cover this real quick, and then that's it. The stand model works. I ordered one that was new that had no issues. Great. Then I wanted to get the one with the stand. And then they told me that the one with the stand was going to be available on Newegg, but it wasn't available on Amazon. And if I purchase for Newegg, Newegg doesn't give me a warranty that covers the accidental warranty. The original model that I purchased had that I showed had a warranty, but it was from Amazon, but it's for four years tech support. Okay, it did turn on. The battery was just super dead. I was about to say. Anyway, oh yeah, the battery's dead. You saw it at zero. So basically, I purchased another one because I couldn't wait. That was open box. And it said like five dead pixels. I um, used it and I did the eraser method on the dead pixels where you massage them. I had no issues. It, it was beautiful work, like literally no issues. I, I made sure it worked for like, like a while, like a few months. And I got that one, which is going to be my main and... I don't think they let you add a warranty to the open box ones, so that's why I had to sell that one. And then I got this one. This is new, the warranty works, everything's good. This actually is another open box one I ordered to test, like I said, four. So I can actually say, you know, are those reviews where I say it's garbage? I, I was actually a little scared to say that this one open box is completely dead from the get go. Um, anyway, no, it, it, it works. Um, it's just super dead, so it's charging right now. But if you want to get it new and you want the warranty that covers accidental and all that, make sure you buy it new and then make sure you buy the warranty within 30 days. And um, I got confirmation from Square Trade. I emailed them. I got I added them on Twitter or whatever. And I did get a confirmation. So if anything happens in the future, I do have a confirmation. If you guys want to do that before you order it, do it. It just try to do it now or try to do it soon because when those stock they're sold out in like a day or two um, I kept track and I was waiting because uh, I was trying to get a gift card and uh, the gift card didn't come in time and that thing was available one day and sold out so I, I, I didn't care as soon as I woke up I saw seven units and it was still within those 24 hours I ordered it they did restock them and it should be available as of today today is the 10th or something like that um but they aren't coming for like a month, like a solid month. So whenever they make batches, like every three months, basically like SFF cases, it takes it takes a while for that batch to roll out. This is two months before that batch and the buttons on this feel like mushy trash. That one is nice. My first one was nice. So two ones that had mushy buttons are the open box ones. So maybe um, the people that just got them new and returned them because they were mushy buttons and trash. But like, I don't know. Maybe the people just abused them. I don't know. This one said like front panel damage. Like it's kind of like scratchy on the front. Um, I was really upset that the calibration report on this one is better than that one. That's why I was like actually kind of salt. This one's like 0 0.6. That one's like 1.3 off. Yeah, yeah, salt. Um, but like I said, I have a calibrator. So let me see if I can get this screen. <sighs> so look, just says HDMI. The other one said FreeSync Premium. That's it, that's all I wanted to show. This thing, uh, usually the battery is high enough on my panels that it holds the charge but this is like so depleted that i'm gonna have to probably get it to like 20 percent, and then it can hold the charge and then be on at the same time and slowly power it up but this is like super depleted but um yeah this one's going i'm not i'm not keeping this thing with a dent in the front and all that and i honestly don't feel like wasting time trying to get this to work so if you see an open box and you really do want to save the money, it is worth, but yeah. I guess I'll wait till this turns on just to show that it works. Took a while, but proof that it works. Um, my other one's over there. I haven't changed anything. I had to hook up two USB-C cables 
to charge this fast enough to get this up and working. So if you do want to save money, G-Sync works. You can see G-Sync is on over here. And you can get the open box one. Um, as of right now, looking, I don't really see any dead pixels. So if you want to save $100 and you don't care about the stand, then sure, it's an option. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm not keeping this one. I'm keeping that one. I love that one. The buttons feel nice on it. Um, there's definitely a firmware difference. I have no idea how to do a firmware update. I absolutely doubt Asus will even tell you how to. Uh, now, what I'm curious about is if this has, my bad, if this one has FreeSync and that one has FreeSync Premium, does this one have LFC? And does this one not have LFC support? That's what I'm curious about. Uh, the OLED does have FreeSync Premium, um, and I think it's confirmed that the CX has LFC support. Um, the C9 only supports G-Sync and VRR, not FreeSync. It doesn't for support FreeSync at all. Pretty sure. Unless they said that they're allowing it, which they should allow, but you gotta buy the CX. They gotta give you a reason. So, anyway. That's it. That's pretty much it. Any questions? Anything? Anything at all? comment ask whatever but i think i've literally done pretty much everything you could do on these unless somebody says hey what does it look like and i want to see call of duty warzone at 240 hertz because i can actually hold 240 hertz now and does it does it ghost or anything with level 5 overdrive and would you sync on with 237 fps locked um so you know it never triggers v-sync but yeah that's pretty much it thanks peace